I'm going to introduce you to Sahil Sashdev, who's head of brand and experience design for QIP. Um, quick up. Q quick up. I beg your pardon. Quite Sorry, quick up. I beg your pardon. Confusing. We're so how we spell the you, name. you better you better answer the question. So how do we pronounce the name? <laughs> quick up. Quick up. Okay. So you get to CK. CK. What and what what is quick up? Uh, so uh, what we do now is kind of very different from where we started. Um, what we do now is we call it logistics as a service, which basically enables businesses of all shapes and sizes to outsource their last mile logistics, turn on on demand, same day delivery, basically at the, the click of a button. Um, we do that through sort of three pillars, uh, tech, so traveling salesman algorithm, which basically looks at the best way to move things uh, around the city. Uh, we have a fleet of drivers um, who are you know, runners, uh, people on bicycles, electric scooters, uh, non-electric scooters, uh, and support, live support. Are they your drivers? Uh, they are our drivers, that's okay. correct, yep. Okay. Yep. Um, and, and, and live support, so you know, those are people who are looking at every delivery from beginning to end, making sure it happens in the, uh, make sure the customer's happy at the, at the end of it. Uh, we do it for enterprises, so you know the likes of Tesco. Uh, we do ship from store, where basically bricks and mortar retailers can uh, uh, turn their, 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 their stores into fulfillment centers. Um, we do it for e-commerce businesses, ship from warehouse. If you order before 12 o'clock, we'll uh, bring it down from wherever the warehouse is, distribute it to micro warehouses around London, um, and then uh, deliver later on that evening. And we do ship from customer, the returns uh, leg, basically, where you can press a button, somebody comes within half an hour or so, picks up the return, and we end up getting it back to the, uh, to the retailer. We also do it for SMEs, but that's a bit more straightforward, uh, a bit more straightforward web-based interface, essentially. And what what is your consumer app? Because you have an app, don't you? So the way QuickUp actually started, it started very much as a consumer business. Uh, it began a few years ago as a get anything delivered uh, app. So in in the in its initial uh, iteration, basically a few text boxes um, where you can say wh where do you want to pick up from, where do you want to deliver to, what's the item. Um, and somebody would go there, literally they can walk into Selfridges or your local kebab shop, pick up whatever it is uh, and bring it to you. Uh, over time, that evolved into something of a marketplace, so we saw the kind of locations that people were, were most interested in. They became partners or even non-partners, uh, uh, hosted them on the app, uh, and so the app became something of a, of a marketplace for anything you wanted basically delivered on demand. While this was happening, we were basically building this underlying operational infrastructure of that tech, of the drivers, of the support, uh, um, uh, customer support representatives. Um, and we found that businesses began to approach us saying, actually, can we make use of, of, that, of that, uh, that network that you have? So um, you know, not too long ago, we decided to, to double down on the B2B side of the business, offer that to, uh, to, to businesses of, of all shapes and sizes, uh, as I said. But we still have the consumer app. It's still uh, you know, growing at a relatively healthy, uh, healthy uh, rate. Um, and, uh, and, and we also decided to have a rethink about exactly what role that can play. So it, 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 even though there's a, it, you can have pretty much anything delivered, people still tend to use it for prepared food delivery. Yeah. That's, that's the primary use case in a sense, sure. right? You're hungry, you want food, you're, people are used to, to ordering uh, food now. It, it's, it's changing, uh, you know, people want all kinds of things now, but still most people are using us for prepared food. Uh, we decided we don't want to play in that space. Uh, the competition, Deliveroo and Uber Eats, they have a, their business model is focused entirely on doing prepared food. So the way they work is they, they operate in, in zones around London where they'll, they'll have a bunch of riders who congregate in areas of, of dense restaurants, restaurant locations, and they deliver two miles away. So somebody will pick up the food, go away, come back, go away, come back, go away, and come back. What we are doing is creating a sort of ever-flowing network of riders uh, moving around a city. So it doesn't really work with our business model. We can't deliver an excellent customer experience. That's why if you use Deliveroo, food will be at your door in 30 minutes, piping hot. Um, it's not really what, what we no. want to be doing. No. It's also the kind of thing where the, the, it's very time sensitive. So sort of the difference between 40 minutes since you ordered your food and 60 minutes since you ordered your food, if you've ever, been, uh, if you've ever ordered food and been left there waiting for an hour, is massive, right? Um, so we made a decision actually to, to move away from that and rethink the consumer app. Uh, so exactly what role, given that we have this operation, given that we have this uh, operational network in a sense, what more can it do for people, which is actually going to make the app a, a valuable thing that people use on a regular basis. 
Um, so we did a piece of ethnographic uh, research work. Uh, ethnographic insight is sort of basically, call it corporate anthropology. It's a way of understanding a user. So we took a senior team away from, from the business for four days, uh, spoke to about 20 people, spending about four hours each with these people. So you go into their homes, you wouldn't tell them you were coming from QuickUp, um, and you try and understand their lives. So their daily routine, uh, how, they, you know, how they ate, how they shopped, uh, how they looked for help when they, when they needed it and so on. Um, and from that, you get a sense of actually what the, the lives of our users. And then you can go away and think, okay, now what can we do with this fleet of people riding around the city that can actually improve their, uh, improve their, their lives? Um, so the outcome essentially of, of that piece of work is we're keeping all the existing functionality, but we're also building what we call internally personal logistics. Uh, to the end customer is going to be errands or get it done, which basically it's, it's sort of like, you know, like TaskRabbit does chores inside the house. We do errands which require mobility outside the house. Okay. Um, so you have these, this, this, you know, these, these uh, riders run, uh, riding around the city. What can they do for you? If you've ever been at work and you need to go to the post office, it's a bloody faff. If you've forgotten a po your passport and you need to get back home and get it, it's a bloody faff. If you've ordered click and collect, uh, it's a faff. So they're all, these, uh, they're all these sort of daily errands which rely on mobility, uh, which rely on you having to leave your desk or leave your house and go somewhere else uh, that actually we could do for you. Uh, and so what we're doing is, uh, is building that into the app. In the, in the initial iteration, basically just suggesting to people, hey, you know, have you forgotten something? Uh, do you need to go to the post office, et cetera, et cetera? We can actually do that for you um, and, uh, and, and moving the app in, in that direction. So we're not as reliant on, on prepared and, food. And, and what's, what's the commercial model behind it? So how are you charging for the service? So the, we, we, op we have a, a, a model where there's, it's basically based on distance. So if it's a, a short journey, it costs you a few pounds. If it's a longer journey, it costs you a few pounds plus, plus X. Um, okay. with, with things like uh, food or, or even with retailers where you have a, a partnership model, then you, you have a partnership model where essentially you, you take a share of revenue. Yeah. For things like the errands model, it's, uh, it's a little bit different. Okay. Where people actually pay for the service okay. like that you're okay. providing to them. So at the moment, it's a B2C model, but clearly you've got B2B opportunities here. What does the future hold for B2B? So it's, uh, we have B2C and B2B both. Okay. Uh, and the way we see it is that we, we basically have a, logis uh, you know, a logistics 2.0, 4.0, whatever you want to call it. We have a, a modern day urban logistics operation, which has a B2B proposition and a B2C proposition. We're focusing at the moment very much on, on B2B. What the B2, why, why it's relevant that actually B, that we, we came from, from, from a, a consumer background is all the businesses we're dealing with uh, are dealing with consumers. So we have uh, two things. A, an intrinsic understanding of the consumer, uh, of exactly what they're looking for, uh, of the power of customer experience, of the power of the doorstep experience, the sort of intangible stuff that probably a traditional logistics business doesn't have. Uh, and we also have years of data uh, and insights on, on consumer behavior. Um, and uh, over time, we, we, we built solutions or products in a sense, um, which, uh, which got us to where we are, which we are now remodeling for, uh, for B2B. So the consumer app is being re, re, uh, rebuilt to be a white label e-commerce solution for let's say a supermarket that doesn't necessarily have one. Sure. So they can take that, they can use all the tech, they can use all the front end interface and so on to actually uh, uh, you know, t basically within a, a couple of months uh, have a, a, a mobile e-commerce solution. Uh, we created a, a, a picking solution for Tesco, which again uh, helps grocery, grocers, uh, supermarkets, retailers use it in store. They can basically turn their, their shop assistants into, into sort of fulfillment assistants. So it's an app where you can walk around, scan a barcode, prepare it for, uh, uh, prepare it for delivery. So these are all sort of pieces of a solution which then enables the last mile. Uh, but we do a lot of value-added stuff up front because we happen to have started in, in consumer. Uh, and along the way, uh, along our journey, we've, uh, we've created a number of, of, of products which are very useful, actually, to, to enterprises and small okay. businesses. Okay. Um, at the moment, the business is UK-centric? Well, we operate in, in London, uh, in Manchester, and Dubai. And we're seeing massive growth, actually, in Dubai. Uh, we have uh, plans to expand uh, potentially uh, in, in, in that part of the world. 
that part of the, there's much less education either there. So you know, people are much more accustomed to ordering stuff to their door. Sure. Um, you know, the sort of service culture there is a bit different. There's a bit, bit of an education piece here, where, as I was saying, people use us for on-demand food. Uh, we're still not fully used to other stuff on demand. That's changing with, with sort of Prime now and so on. Um, but there's still a bit of an educational piece in a sense. Um, but I think you know everybody probably here in this in this uh, in here and in the, in the sort of hall beyond appreciates the way that it's, it's only moving one way. Uh, yeah, nobody's looking for a longer delivery. So you don't even need this stuff necessarily no. on demand. You could, but you kind of expect it because mm. other mm. people offer other it. People offer it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So innovation for the future. Where do you see the vis where do you see it going? Uh, you know. So we mentioned the the ethnographic sort of piece of work that we're doing. Uh, that's something that we'd like to to reproduce for uh, for our B two B audiences. But on a broader level. Um, the, the way that goods move around the city is actually has a massive, massive implication for things like sustainability, for things like quality of life and so on. You have uh, trucks which are, which are you know, rattling around city, uh, uh, running over cyclists. They're moving around half empty uh, half the time. Um, it's very, very inefficient. Um, what we think if we are successful we can, we can do is by driving efficiency, uh, make sure that any journey that's being undertaken to deliver goods, and there are going to be many more of this because of obviously the rise of e-commerce, any journey that's being undertaken uh, to deliver goods is done in the most sustainable and efficient way possible and through the smallest sort of form factor. Um, so that's the end game. On the way there, there's things like micro warehouses, there's robotic warehouses, there's delivery by drones, uh, and so on, which is not, uh, you know, we, we, we are working with a company called Starship, mm -hmm. who have autonomous ground vehicles, these little white robots who make their way around, around sidewalks and so on. So there's a huge amount of, of stuff to come. Yep. Um, but the end game actually is to, to, uh, to help uh, businesses uh, who are not Amazon, let's say, uh, compete on a level playing field. Uh, and also, there is a, a quality of life dimension uh, because of the sustainability uh, uh, factor, as I mentioned, which happens to be a, a sort of positive externality of doing business in a sense. So. Okay. You're a bright young guy working in the sector, in the logistics sector, in the technology sector. How do we, how do we attract more young people like you into this industry? It's an interesting uh, question. Um, and I think we've, this is a, t a total anecdotal uh, data. Um, but there's an interest in the last mile. I mean, logistics traditionally has been seen as sort of very, uh, very dull. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things which is fundamental to the operation of, of life, in a sense. Uh, but logistics uh, is not, uh, hasn't traditionally been a very glamorous uh, 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 profession, perhaps, uh, or at least perceived as such. I think the, the, the rise of technology and the fact that actually tech is enabling us uh, us to, to, to transform the industry and will continue to enable us to transform the industry, people will begin to see the potential that exists uh, if we actually use technology in, uh, in a proper way or in a power, in, in a, if we use technology to enable logistics, uh, there's a lot that can change. And I think bright young uh, people uh, with an ambition to make some kind of a difference will find it easier to see from the outside looking in uh, the potential of uh, of uh, a career in, in logistics. Absolutely. Okay. Fantastic. Do you mind if I open it up? To no, please. Um, I'm going to open it up now. Is any anybody anybody got questions for Sahil, for Sahil at the moment? Yeah, I've got one question down here. Thank you. Hold on. Hi. You um, spoke about electric bikes and micro warehousing, all that kind of thing. I just wanted to know how much of a consideration to the company being green or em environmentally friendly is, especially when operating in kind of central London and that kind of thing? Uh, yeah, uh, it's a good question. Um, it's important to us. Um, and it's very much something that we want to uh, have a dedicated, we want to have a sustainability strategy in place. We don't have one yet. What's, uh, what's positive, though, is that by using uh, logistics, or by doing logistics in the way that we do, almost sort of by, by definition is far more sustainable than the traditional way of doing logistics. You're not using vans, you're probably using bikes. If you're using a non-electric scooter, it's far more sustainable than, uh, than a van or, or a truck. 
Um, you know, we we use we're trialing runners who who you know who sort of would, would run and, and and deliver stuff. So uh, uh, you know the, your autonomous ground vehicles are electric. Drones are also electric. So the future, in a sense, of last mile in urban locations will inevitably be far more sustainable than it is now. Add to that, you know, you have the transport secretary uh, uh, criticizing, or at least speaking about the extent to which uh, deliveries are, are, are clogging up uh, uh, you know, uh, roads and cities and arteries and so on. Uh, again, by using somebody like, like QuickUp, uh, you're using much smaller form factor. And these are people who sort of, you know, uh, we, don't, uh, we don't add to the traffic, actually. So if you could imagine a, a, a situation where all last mile logistics were, were enabled by, by QuickUp or somebody like us, it would be far more sustainable uh, and far, uh, far, it could make the city a far nicer place to live, essentially. Just, just to finish off, Sale, do you, do you see an opportunity to maybe partner with some larger organisations to bring your technology and your techniques and innovations to another, another more established business? Do you see that might be a future future development? Absolutely, for that's, that's 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 uh, very much the B two B side. So, what we do for Tesco, uh, if if that's if that's sort of yep. for the kind of company you're talking about. Um, so what we do with them, they, they created. Uh, see, the, the difference between Deliver and Uber Eats and us is we have no interest in owning the customer. We have no interest in owning the customer experience. Um, so what we do with Tesco, Tesco has an app called Tesco Now, which we help them to develop. It's a fully Tesco branded app. It's a full Tesco experience. Tesco owns all the customer data. The customer makes an order. Uh, the order comes through to us through our API. One of our quickies, which is what we call our drivers, uh, goes to a Tesco Metro store, does the shopping, drops it off at the customer's uh, um, uh, location, uh, um, wherever the customer wants us to drop it off. And so uh, uh, yeah, that's where we developed the picking solution. So literally sort of on a mobile phone where they can walk around, the quickie can walk around, scan a barcode. He knows what it is. Uh, if there's something which is the customer asks for, it's not there, it suggests um, uh, substitutions, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so that's a, a really good example, perhaps, of uh, Tesco, who are, who are relatively innovative, thinking about how do you create an omnichannel experience? How do I uh, use my store as a fulfillment center? They don't actually, they're not in the business of developing all the technology. They're not in the business of, uh, of creating a whole new fleet necessarily. Uh, they, they, they are, their business is, uh, is getting the stuff to the store and selling it at, the, at, the, uh, you know, at the, probably the most cost effective way possible. So that's an excellent example of us working with a, a, a massive retailer, one of the UK's biggest, uh, to enable them um, to, to innovate. So that's effectively a, a white label solution that that's you a white produce label to for Tesco. So how do you get kudos for that and how do you get your brand out there and, and, and yeah? So it's good, uh, yeah. Um, so they were the first people we worked with in this way. The ambition is to have, yeah, uh, pay with PayPal, mm -hmm. check out with QuickUp. Yeah. Um, now to do that, be the, you need to stand for something, right? Okay. So you pay with PayPal, you know that it's going to, to you know, there's a degree of safety and security. What does it mean to check out with QuickUp? Uh, you're going to have an amazing doorstep experience. It's going to be there uh, when we say it will be. There'll be people to contact uh, if you want to, if you need to. Um, and then it makes it much easier to sell to people to say, no, you should have us on our website because actually it's a bit of a halo effect. Us, having us on the website benefits you. So in the future, um, it's, we'd like to make sure we're not fully white labeled. As I say, we don't have an interest in owning the customer no, experience, no, no. but we'd like to have a presence there. No. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Thank you. Okay.